My name is Yahya Puran, Puran, and this is my story. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni umbahadikum la ta'lamun shay'a لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة لعلكم تشكرون. My name is Yahya. I'm from the Bahamas. I grew up in Nassau, Bahamas, and I've been studying Arabic language for a year and a half, like a year and a half now. Well, what inspired me was um, the situation back in my country. Nobody really having knowledge of Islam and really know how to speak the language of Arabic, which is the language of the Quran. So that really inspired me to, you know, push forward and pursue this. But when I first arrived, I felt really freaked out because coming from a land where even the dress code was totally different, the people coming from a black nation and then coming where I'm seeing Arabs and people dressed totally different and women covered, you know, it just was a freak a real freaky scene to me, you know? I was freaked out by that. The motivations for speaking Arabic is, number one, it's the, it's the language of the Quran. And it's nothing more beautiful than that, because the Quran is the message from Allah and it's nothing more beautiful than that. No matter where we're from, we think we speak or from Jamaica or Bahamas, we speak with our dialect, Patwa, this and that, we might think it's beautiful. It's nothing more beautiful than the Quran, you know? So that's what motivated me to really pursue this and do this. That was the motivation right there. I think a lot of people put off the Arabic language because it's like, they think it's too hard. And honestly, that's what I felt too when I first stepped into it. I think it was like real hard. It's like, it's just intimidating in a way because it's, it's something, especially for us Westerners coming from the West and speaking English, you know, and jumping into something like Arabic. It's real heavy, you know, Arabic is a heavy language. To hear people speak it is real heavy, so kind of intimidates you, you know? So I think that's the reason why a lot of people back off from it. But my first intention was, the first off, that I may be able to understand the Quran for myself and to be able to teach my family and people around me. And then on a wider scale though, help spread Islam in my country and do for the sake of Islam in my country, for my people and my nation. Uh, you gotta like just reading a lot, saying words, like practicing words by myself, saying it to myself. And that's every little word going over it again, the pronunciation and you know, making sure I sound correct when I do it. Kam sana ashra suluna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashra suluna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thalath, thalathan wa sitteen sana. Asha Rasulun Asha Rasuluna Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Asha Rasuluna Asha Rasuluna Asha Rasuluna Asha Asha Rasuluna Asha Rasuluna Our messenger lived Our messenger lived Asha Rasuluna Being in the environment for about a year and hearing the people around me speaking and going places like the shopping you know, restaurants and having to use the words and stuff. You know, it stuck like maybe after a year or so. Learning Arabic got me real close to Allah because now I could read and recite Quran. Even if I don't really understand it, but I can read it and recite it in its its original text and form. And I feel like it gives me a just a vibe and an essence when I read it. You know? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا السماء شقت وأذنت لربها وهقت وإذا الأرض مدت والقت ما فيها وتخلت وأذنت لربها وهقت يا أيها الإنسان إنك كده إلى ربك كده فملاكي فأما من أتي كتابه بيميني فصوف يهسبه سبا يسيرا وينقلب إلى أهله مسرورا 
first time I sat in Arabic class was real nerve-wracking for me because being around all sorts of different people, this guy from Africa, this guy from India, this guy from Russia, you know, and just having all that mix of people and, you know, coming from a small island, it was real nerve-wracking for me, you know. I never studied Arabic in my country before coming to Medina. I never even learned Alif Bata. I literally just learned those things coming to Medina. When I came to Medina, I literally just learned Alif Bata. So I never studied before back home. I would have to say the milestone is the pronunciations of, of the letters, trying to get the correct pronunciation and coming from a different language. The sounds are different. You know, the funny sounds like ein and you know, different things like this. You have to make sure I get it on point, so that was like a milestone. I think the turning point for me was when I started to realize and see the people around me, certain students and how serious they took it. And I realized like how serious this, this learning this Arabic is, you know, by just observing students around me. And I realized how serious they took it, so it made me, you know, step forward in it. The turning point for me was like, one summer I went home and I got in some problems and I wasn't able to come back on my Saudi visa. So, students from the Caribbean, what we have to do is, when we get a visa from Saudi, they send it to Caracas, Venezuela. And being from the Bahamas, um, we're not in an ally with a country like Venezuela. So, I had to first get a visa to go to Venezuela so I had to leave to go to Cuba first to get the Venezuelan visa. And then when I, once I got that and I went to Venezuela, I came across difficulties there because the country there was in turmoil. It was having a lot of problems there. And all kind of different things. And it was just real hard because it's not a Muslim country, so it's a lot of fitting down there. It's number one. Number two, the guys down there was giving me a hard time because, you know, every, anywhere you go in the world and it's not a Muslim country, they're going to give you a hard time. People against Islam, you got to realize it's the reality of the situation. So the people down there was giving me a hard time. So, like, I was literally stuck down there for three months. Three months in Venezuela. I don't speak Spanish. I have no family down there. And I was stuck in this country with, I'm talking little or no money. I'm talking, subhanAllah, if it wasn't for my faith, wallahi, Still today, I can't say really how I survive. When I wanted food, I make dua. When I was scared, I make dua. And I was like, this country was in serious turmoil because these like, soldiers was everywhere. And even my Venezuelan visa ran out on me in a three month span. But just for the fact that I know how important this is to me and my country, that's what kept me going on and striving. And so you know what? I'm gonna pursue this because this is the most important thing I could do in my life. Even more important than getting a million, zillion dollars. The easiest part of learning the Arabic language for me was, uh, I would have to say reading, reading. I never could even write good in my own language, so the writing part was really hard for me, but as far as reading, once I learned how to read and I learned how to pronunciate the, the letters of the Arabic language, then that, that was like really easy for me. Like I found it real smooth coming out when I read. لقد أرسل الله سبحانه وتعالى في هذه الأمة رسولا بالدين الإسلامي وأمره أن يدعو الناس جميعا للدخول في هذا الدين ليقرجوا من ظلمات إلى نور بإذن الله فما اسم فما اسم رسولنا فما اسم رسولنا because you know with the, with the Quranic Arabic you have to say things appropriately in a pop you know you have to say it eloquently in the way it, it, it is, in its natural form. You can't change half and that, you know, I know. You can't, you can't mix this up. You have to pronounce and sound correct. So it's like that was really, you know, the difficult part. Just getting the, the sounds, the proper sounds of the, the Arabic letters. As far as when I went to class and the teacher was talking, I was completely lost. Like, I was completely lost. Students was around me was, they, they came from certain countries, so they had the background. Whereby me, I just learned Alif Bata, like I said, so it was like, it was nerve wracking. On top of that, I'm hearing this guy teach and I don't understand anything, so it adds to my nerves. 
and it was like just a total mess. I didn't understand anything. Wallah, first, I didn't understand anything. Understand anything. It was all on me practicing when I went home. Shwaya, shwaya, you know, piece by piece. And then finally, you know, after a while it came, everything came together. When I first understand, like started to find myself understanding what the teachers say or students around me, like, wallah, I felt like a joy in my, like I felt such a joy because I always felt like I would have been a nobody in life. So that's simple as learning Arabic and really understanding now and, and realizing that I, I tried something and I'm actually growing in it. It made me feel a joy, like I never felt this joy before, like, wallah, I never felt this joy before. And when I first started reading, I was like reading like a, a real kid, like a child. And everybody around me is reading, you know, they're reading proper. And I'm reading slow, so it was like really embarrassing because even certain people, they was to laugh at me. Because I was like a child in kindergarten just learning how to read. Like, um, it's me, like, you know, struggling real hard with it, so it's really embarrassing, you know. This with English, English is my mother language, so it just comes off like this with me. But with Arabic, transitioning to Arabic now, I found myself have to think before I speak. So my speaking will be more slower. Because, you know, with Arabic grammar is different than English. And I used to find myself, uh, if I do learn a word in Arabic, and I put it in a sentence, I would put it the way I say English. I wouldn't put it in the actual Arabic grammar, so it wouldn't make no sense. So when I do speak to people, I, I'm saying the, the correct words, but I'm not putting in the correct format, so it wouldn't make any sense. So that was the that was the, like a big transition, you know. The situation in my country, I kept thinking about Islam back home and how it's so small, and how people back home don't have the knowledge. And I just noticed people around me and how they came from certain countries, and they from countries where Islam is like huge. And these people, like, they, they striving hard, you know? So it kept me really motivated and consistent in, in pursuing this and going harder because it's so important for me, my family, and my nation as a whole, you know? It might sound strange, but I used to actually always talk to myself, you know, like, back home people say, it's okay to talk to yourself, but if you answer yourself back, you're crazy, you know? So. I used to actually talk to myself and answer myself back in Arabic. And that's how I used to like, you know, make, make it easy to memorize words and practice words just by having a total conversation with myself, by myself, you know. The Arabic language impacted my life in a huge way because it made me feel like somebody. Honestly, before I even became a Muslim, I was like coming from, you know, coming from the ghetto and coming from a place where people didn't even considered to be somebody, you know. It, it, once I learned the Arabic language and I realized this is the language of the best of mankind and, and the, the best thing, which is the Quran, you know. So once I, I found myself like, I, I'm speaking this, I'm speaking the language of the message and the, the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that made you feel like some sense of pride and some sense of, hey, I'm somebody. Simple as that, simple as the Arabic language. It made me feel like I'm somebody. Uh, my goals for the future as far as uh, acquiring this Arabic language is to be of great help to my people and my nation of people as far as dawah and just teaching Muslims how to read Quran and, you know, setting up a, maybe a madrasa, inshallah, be it Allah, just helping my nation to pursue in Islam. This is the greatest thing. If you can pursue in tourism, whatever else, these things seem more bigger than this message of Allah, which is the Quran. So I feel like this will be a big, huge thing for my nation for me to push forward to teach the Muslims how to speak in Arabic and how to understand and read and recite Quran in Arabic and also to invite people into Islam, give dawah, go out in the streets and, you know, hit up the people and strive for Allah. Uh, if I could start all over again. Wallahi, we, we humans, so... I mean, Qadda Allah, Mahashafa, I wouldn't change anything because it went the way it went. Like, even with the situation with me in Venezuela, I went through suffering, Wallahi, I went through suffering in Venezuela. But, after that, my Iman, 
increased and it also made me realize how much I wanted to learn this Arabic language. So like, mashallah, I, I came a long way and I really grew because of the struggles I've been through. So I learned from my pain and suffering and I became a better man and a bigger man in Islam. Uh, my advice to the brothers and sisters back home and people back home who wanna, you know, pursue Arabic language, I would tell them that this is the most important thing you could do with your life. Like, before you could be a lawyer, a doctor, a judge, you know, whatever, whatever you think you could be, like a, a celebrity making millions of dollars, like, what's more bigger than Islam? What's more bigger than your own soul salvation, you know what I mean? So like, and the beginning of that is by learning the Arabic language so you could at least understand it to a full understanding, you know? So it's very important in our life. Very, very important in our life. Even bigger than whatever you could think of. So this is, this is very huge. And I, you should not be afraid. You should, you know, not worry what people say or people laughing or making fun of you. Because just focus and know that when you do things, you do things for the sake of Allah. For example, a guy in the Mahari, he told me, like, when I first came, he said, I noticed, like, you just do things for the sake of people, like, you would be scared in class or nervous to ask a teacher about questions because you feel like people would laugh at you. And wallahi, after he said that, he made me realize for real, you know, like, you can't worry about what people say, you can't worry about what people do. It's all about every action you do should be done for the sake of Allah. And after that, that itself will keep you on the track and keep you pursuing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ah, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kifalak? Alhamdulillah, be kair. Ana be kair. Aina anta lan. Ana fil bayti. Asana. Ana mashkula lan. Lakin, itasilu bada sala inshallah. Taib? Hayak Allah. Zakallah wa kairi shaykh. Taib. Hayak Allah.